Last week, Apple unveiled a few new features in Xcode, among them Swift Assist and predictive code completion. Now, Swift Assist is not going to be available yet, later this year, so that's um, their AI model where you can ask questions about an entire project and use a, an assistant-like interface in Xcode. Uh, so that's not available yet, but their predictive code completion is in the latest Xcode beta. So I thought I'd take a look and see what it's like. So to start off with, we're going to open a new file and we'll just start off small with some basic Swift code, for example. And I'm going to use ChatGPT uh, to give some example code that we might actually use in this file. So uh, let's ask ChatGPT to um, generate some Swift code for a list of products. All right, so this is giving us some interesting data here that we can cross-reference uh, with predictive code completion. So we're defining a product struct. So let's try that. So we'll go down and define a struct. All right, so we've already got some predictive code. So I'm going to press tab and it doesn't really insert anything except the closing brace. But that's okay, I'm gonna go in. All right, so it's now suggesting a name and now a price. All right, that seems to be it. What if I do a return? All right, so description, image name, yeah, that's a common use case. Yeah, category. All right, nothing's coming up here. You can also do editor show completions. So that's the old um, completions dialog. Uh, this is not really um, what I'm after, but you know, it could be it could be useful. So you know that's not unlike what ChatGPT came up with, uh, you know, because these fields are typical product items. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's see how it goes when creating an array of products. So I'm gonna do let products equal array. And nothing seems to be happening. Let's try and, okay, that's, that's not what I want. I mean, yeah, if I do that, and if I take this completion, this is just the standard filling in the values uh, yourself, which is nice, but it's not uh, giving me a list of products like ChatGPT. What if I add a closing bracket there and then let it do some crunching here. All right, so we, we got something here. Let's tab products one, products three. All right, well, <laughs> that's great, but that doesn't really help us that much. So let's let's guide it a little bit more. So we'll do um, you know, product and then name iPhone and that's a very cheap iPhone that ChatGPT generated. Uh, description. Yeah, we have a description. So yeah, like, you know, we could fill in all of these values, but, uh, you know, we're not going to get much completion happening there. So let's, um, 
is feeling some of that. And see, I know I'm not, I haven't used any engineering here. Let's see if it suggests anything here. Edit, show completions. All right, like what if, um, what if I want to iterate, say, over the products for products, new products. Well, yeah, I guess that's, ah, here we go. Got product prices less. <laughs> well, yeah, that's fair. Um, some more code completion. No, it doesn't seem to want to do anything there. All right, so it's now autofilling product dot description. So you kind of get the picture. Uh, I played around with it a bit, and it seems like it um, might be useful in some cases, but uh, it needs a lot of um, prodding, and I imagine that Swift Assist will be a bit more useful and kind of give us that more ChatGPT like experience uh, as far as coding Xcode goes. But you know, this is just a Swift file. Uh, what if we generate a Swift UI file uh, and see how it does in there? So let's do example. Swift UI and we can now go in here and it's already filled this out so let's let's delete that example Swift UI view and then let it suggest something or not all right so Suggesting something here. So, yeah, you know, you can suggest stuff. Uh, so let's go back into ChatGPT and this time uh, let's generate some example Swift UI code. And then we can kind of compare the two. So, you know, we'll continue our products example and Right, so I'll just copy this for brevity. And all right, let's let's help it out here and let's call this products view. And example. So I'll just um, name the preview the same as well. And all right, let's let's create the array of products. Uh, you know, let's let's try out the autocomplete again, just to see if it does anything. Yeah. I'm going to paste the code. All right, so I've got an array of products. And all right, so it's already got the autocompletion, you know, for a standard body. All right, yeah, here we go. List products, product in. All right, so that's, um, that's useful. It kind of knows the standard Swift UI structure, product.name.fontheadline. And what if I want to add another field in here as opposed to the name? Will it suggest something here? Kind of prompt it. What if I start doing text? Uh, all right, so gets product at description, and it's guessed that that would be a secondary headline, which, yeah, that kind of makes sense. All right, ooh, okay, padding, bottom, yeah, I mean, that, that could work. Product price in a horizontal stack, yeah. So... Yeah, some of these some of these suggestions are useful. It does take a little bit of prodding, but 
you know, it is it is generating some some useful things here, but it is uh, it's kind of critical to have the knowledge of you know what uh, structure it should be working to. So you know, naming it products view and having a list of products uh, that it can kind of then work off. So these are you know files that don't have any other context and uh, part of the whole selling point of this predictive code completion was that it would read your project and, and understand your project and provide more context specific suggestions. So I recently completed the tutorial um, landmarks in Swift UI and we can see here that we're in the landmark detail view and um, you know we have a, a circle image here and some Swift UI code so let's say delete this circle image and then All right, so it's suggesting a landmark feature image, which is in the project. So I think landmark feature image, do we have a landmark feature image? Ooh, maybe we don't, but at least, you know, it's um, providing project specific suggestions and um, stuff related to landmarks, which is good. And then if we go down here and see if it predicts anything dot bold. Mm. All right. What if I just delete this and landmark dot is favorite. Yeah, you know, that is favorite is a valid property on landmark star.fill. So you can see here that it is reading stuff in the project and, and that's getting factored in with the suggestions. Uh, you know, I think there's a bit of room for improvement uh, with the suggestions and, uh, you know, it'll be really exciting to see what Swift Assist can do later in the year. But, uh, you know, an interesting feature, something uh, fun to play around with and we'll see how it develops over time. See you in the next video.